Hey everyone, this is Alpha Eagle. In this episode, we will be taking a look at a Now This video about whitewashing. Now This is a left-leaning media outlet. In this video, they will tell us that being hypocrites and having a double standard is somehow a good thing, and that whitewashing is bad, but blackwashing is good. And as usual, I will put a link in the description so you can get the full context of this video. Now let's begin. Whitewashing is a problem. I actually agree. I think that Bane should have been played by a Hispanic person instead of a British actor. The thing is, it doesn't happen that often in Hollywood anymore. Rarely do you see any kind of whitewashing whatsoever. Liam Neeson in Batman Begins to Scarlett Johansson in Ghost in the Shell and, well, pretty much any U.S. anime adaptation ever. Dragon! None of these are examples of whitewashing. Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul's, his race is ambiguous at best. While he has an Arabic name, in the comics he does not really look Arabic. He has light skin and blue eyes. These are Caucasian features. Also, it was revealed that his father might be Sensei, who is Asian. And he was played by white actor David Warner before in the animated series. So with an Arabic name, Caucasian features, and being played by multiple white actors, and a possible Asian father, it, it's honestly kind of difficult to pin down what race he actually is. Major Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell is a cyborg, and she has no race. As the title suggests, her body is a robotic shell. It can look like any age, race, or gender. In the animated movie, at the end, she gains a childlike body. And in the animated movie, her race is also ambiguous. She has blue eyes, which is a Caucasian feature. It just so happens that she looks Caucasian in the live-action film. The movie explains that she was a teenage Japanese girl when she technically died. Her entire body is essentially a prosthetic shell with a human consciousness inside, so she has no race. Goku from Dragon Ball Z is not even human, so again, he's not part of any race on Earth. He even had a tail like a monkey, so he doesn't have a race. But what about when a white character is played by a person of color on screen? Representation might upset some people who can't accept popular comic book characters like Nick Fury, Johnny Storm, and Domino as people of color, but this thing some people call blackwashing is not a problem. It's not even a thing. She is saying it's not okay for white actors to play non-white characters, and it's called whitewashing. But when black actors play white characters, it's okay because it's called representation. Now, isn't that convenient? This is an obvious example of hypocrisy and double standard. But let's start with why whitewashing is so harmful. Despite all the amazingly nerdy movies and shows coming out in the recent years, people of color are still barely represented. Look at any random trailer or poster and odds are you'll usually see a white person as the lead. It's funny. In her example of the lack of representation, she shows Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And in the clip that she used is a Hispanic man in Dave Bautista as Drax, a black woman in Zoe Saldana as Glamora, and an Asian woman in Palm Kilimitif, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, as Mantis. But it's somehow lacking representation. That doesn't even make any sense. She also shows a poster of X-Men Days of Future Past with a black woman, Halle Berry as Storm, an Asian woman, Bing Bing Fan as Blink. The movie itself has all kinds of other races represented, including black, Asian, Hispanic, and American Indian, as well as so several other cultures like Russian, Jewish, British, and Canadian. But I guess those cultures don't count because they are white cultures. So even her examples that she's given us, that she claims to have a lack of representation, <laughs> she's contradicting herself by giving us these films that have a lot of representation. And it's actually proven her wrong <laughs> because it goes completely against the narrative that she's trying to push here. So when Hollywood takes one of the few examples of canon representation that we do have and cast a white person for whatever reason, you're taking away an opportunity for us to be seen. For me personally, this was especially egregious in the Avatar The Last Airbender movie. 
I was very attached to the show's character Katara, from her dark skin to her great big poofy hair. I was crushed when I saw white actress Nicola Peltz in the movie adaptation because it erased the aspects of Katara that I saw myself. But does Katara really have dark skin and poofy hair? Her skin looks no darker than a white person with a tan, and her hair looks straight to me. It does not look nor move like natural African hair. Also, she has blue eyes, which is, again, a Caucasian feature. Like Rachel Gould, her race is not that easy to determine. I also believe that the Avatar characters, their races are fictional from what I understand. On the other hand, having a person of color play a previously white character isn't taking away white representation. Yes, it does take away white representation. How does it not? I mean, if the character was played by a white actor, that would be representing white persons. But since it's not being portrayed by a white actor, that is taking away what would have been white representation. It's creating new representation and role models for people that Hollywood has ignored for too long. Ignored for too long? What are you talking about? That is a lie and factually incorrect. There has been non-white actors in Hollywood for many decades. When Michael B. Jordan took over as the Human Torch, it opened a door for a new narrative in which a black man and a white woman could be siblings long before This Is Us made a sob every Tuesday night. Okay, so why is that a good thing? And I think we can all agree that Michael B. Jordan is a pretty damn good actor, like, right? Despite the film's flaws, he's an extremely talented dude who absolutely did justice to the role. So because he's a good actor, that somehow makes it okay? You could say the same thing for Liam Neeson or Scarlett Johansson. They are good actors, so it must be okay for them to play other races, right? Johnny Storm's whiteness is not essential to his character. The Human Torch has always been defined by his hot-headed attitude, so why should it matter if he's played by a black man? Again, you could say the same thing about most non-white characters, including all that you mentioned. Race is not essential to Ra's al Ghul, to Major Kusanagi, to Katara, or Goku. So why does it matter if they are played by white actors? It doesn't take anything away from the role and gave kids of color a new hero to look up to. It gave kids of color a new hero of color to look up to? So non-white kids can't look up to white heroes? That's ridiculous. The race, the gender, or anything about the character doesn't matter. Any kid of any race or any gender can look up to any hero they want. They don't have to be the same race or same gender. That's just plain ridiculous and frankly it's kind of racist. The same goes for Nick Fury. He's just a guy with an eye patch who's in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's nothing about his character or his role that requires him to be white. As for Nick Fury, before the MCU even existed, there was a Nick Fury in the Ultimate Marvel Universe who was black and looked a lot like Samuel L. Jackson. So there was a precedent set. Whereas with characters like Johnny Storm, there was no non-white Human Torch in the comics to be based off of for this new movie. Therefore, they were inaccurate to the comic. Now look at the Ancient One from Doctor Strange. They're from the Himalayas, teaching Himalayan culture and folklore. It's central to the character. But in the movie, the Ancient One is played by a white woman. It's a huge missed opportunity to cast an Asian actor in a role. As for Doctor Strange, I actually agree. The Ancient One should have been played by a Tibetan actor. The thing is, Disney wanted to cater to the Chinese audience, and China does not acknowledge Tibet, so Disney caved on that one. So blame China's politics, not whitewashing for that one originates from Tibet. So if you acknowledge that Tibet is a place and that he's Tibetan, you risk um, uh, alienating one billion people who think that that's uh, and risk the Chinese government going, hey, you know, one of the biggest film uh, 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 watching countries in the world, we're not going to show your movie because you decided to get political. The ancient one could have been elevated to the same status that Samuel L. Jackson brought to Nick Fury. He inflated Fury from a 60s James Bond homage to a movie icon in his own right. So a white actor couldn't have made Nick Fury an icon? Your reasons are flimsy at best. And Zazie Beetz could do the same for Domino. I grew up watching Domino on Wolverine and the X-Men, where she's portrayed with comics accurate pale blue skin and a black circle around her eye. Now, she's a black woman with natural hair and her traditional look is still there right down to the eye tattoo. It's just inverted now. But again, Domino in the comics isn't defined by being a white woman. It's not part of her character in any way.
casting a black actress does nothing to damage a domino we know. That's not accurate at all. Her skin is literally white. Not pale blue or Caucasian, literally white. I'm actually fine with Domino being any race for the movie, but whoever they chose should have been painted literally all white, like the way Rebecca Romaine was all blue for Mystique. So to just take a black actress and paint a white around her eye is just lazy and inaccurate. Her hair was also inaccurate. They could have used a black actress with straightened hair or used just a wig. Again, to not do this is just lazy. Also notice that she complained that Katara's hair was supposedly changed for the last Airbender movie, but it's okay to change Domino's hair, which is straight in the comics, to an afro. This is just another example of her double standards. In fact, it just gives black nerds like me someone else I can cosplay at, who I can see myself in. Someone who I can watch on screen and feel represented. Nobody is stopping you from cosplaying as any character you want. Many cosplayers do what they call race bending, and you can do the same. There is no law preventing you from cosplaying as a white character or any character of any race. So go ahead, do it. Nothing is stopping you. Call it blackwashing, race bending, or whatever the hell you want. We can call it blackwashing? You said blackwashing wasn't a thing. Blackwashing is not a problem. It's not even a thing. I just call it a good thing. Why would you call it a good thing? This entire video, you didn't give any valid reason why it's a good thing. In fact, you said it was a bad thing for white people, and that's the point of this racist video. It's only bad when white people do it. That's how you can tell this video is racist, when something is good when every other race does it, but it's only bad when a certain race does it. This was Alpha Eagle and I Gotta Fly. So subscribe, share, like, comment, and God bless America.